Exodus chapter 30, continued. Theme, the altar of incense, the ransomed may worship, the cleansed may worship, the anointed may worship, the incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat, when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water, that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord, Exodus 30 17-20. The priest could not come into the tabernacle to serve unless he had first washed. The priest got contaminated when he was on the outside. When you go to church and do not enjoy the service, maybe it is not just because the preacher is dull. Maybe you are a dirty saint. When you have the combination of a dull preacher and a dirty saint, you do not have a very exciting service. We get dirty in this world, and we cannot worship until we are cleansed. That is why the Lord washed the disciples' feet. He is still doing that today. We need to go to the laver, friends. That is the first thing the priest did. If they were going to the brazen altar, they washed before and after. If they were going into the holy place, they washed before they came in and washed when they came out. I am of the opinion that the matter of washing was very important. It was so important, in fact, that I can imagine one priest saying to another priest at the laver, how many times have you been here today? The other priest might reply, nearly a dozen times. And the first priest would say, well, I've been up here over a dozen times. And look at my hands, I have dishpan hands because I have washed so much. I wonder why God wants us to do this so often? And Aaron, standing in the background, might have said, the Lord wants you to wash and wash and wash so that you will know that you have to be holy. You cannot worship Him, serve Him, or be of use to Him unless you have been cleaned up. The idea that a dirty saint can serve God acceptably simply is not true. Every now and then you hear of some man getting involved with a woman, and folks say, my, I do not understand how a thing like that can happen to one who is doing a great work for God. The man might have been a preacher or a fine Christian worker, but if you check his work, you will find out that it is wood, hay, and stubble. In 1 Corinthians 3 12-15 we learn that. If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. His great work amounts to nothing in God's sight. God wants us to be clean. The priests were to wash in the brazen laver. We are to come to Him in confession. 1 John 1 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This laver of brass pictures our sanctification. We must wash if we are going to serve God. We must wash if we are going to be used by God. We must be clean. Not only should our garments smell like sweet incense, but our bodies should be washed with pure water. The pure water is the Word of God. The laver was made out of brass. The women brought their highly polished brass mirrors to make the laver. They did not have glass mirrors then. The mirrors revealed dirt and that was the purpose of the laver. The laver cleansed the priest, and the laver pictures the Word of God. The Bible is a mirror and when we look into it, our sin is revealed. We then need to confess that sin and be cleansed. Now you are not to confess your sin publicly, you go to Jesus Christ in private. That labor is in heaven. I think that every Sunday, before we ever go inside the church, we should confess our sins for the week. Do not tell me that you don't get dirty. Your eyes get dirty. Your mind gets dirty. Your hands get dirty. Your feet get dirty. You get dirty all right. One of the big troubles in our churches today is that there is too much spiritual B.O. We need to confess our sins to Him and wash before we go into worship. God does not accept worship until it comes from a cleansed heart nor will He accept service except from a cleansed heart. The anointed may worship. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all his vessels. Exodus 30 25-27. What is the anointing for us today? It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We have an anointing that enables us to understand the Word of God. That is the reason the Bible is being made real to so many today. 
It is not the teacher nor the preacher, it is the Spirit of God using the Word of God. Only the Spirit can anoint you. You do not have to go to some man and have him pour oil on you. You can go to God right now and say, God, open my heart and mind and life to understand your Word. 1 John 2 20 says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. The word unction means anointing and it is ours. 1 John 2 27 goes on to say, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The Holy Spirit is the one who can open your mind and heart when you go to work with God to understand his word. What a blessing he will bring to your heart. There are so many people today who are asking the questions, what is life all about? What shall I do today? How shall I communicate my needs? Oh my dear friends, ask God to let the Holy Spirit of God make real His Word to your hearts, and true joy will be yours. The Incense. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, Stacti, and Onicha, and Galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy, and thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation. Exodus 30 34-36. Now the incense, as we are told in verse 34, was made of sweet spices, stacti, and onicha, and galbanum, along with pure frankincense. Stacti was a resinous gum that oozed from trees on Mount Gilead. It was called the Balm of Gilead. The onicha came from a species of shellfish that resembled a crab. The galbanum was taken from the leaves of a Syrian plant. These were blended with pure frankincense. It was a secret formula, long since lost. The mixture of these spices gave off a sweet incense, and it was not to be duplicated nor replaced. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof, it shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that, to smell thereto, shall even be cut off from his people, Exodus 30 37-38. No one was to use this formula for himself. Neither would God accept any counterfeit. The altar speaks to us of prayer and worship. It is a place where we are to offer our praise, thanksgiving, and our requests. It is not to be duplicated. This formula was not to be used in an attempt to try and make the incense or worship pleasing to the natural man. You cannot make worship pleasing to the natural man. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. All sorts of things are used to try and trap people into going to church. Nothing but the Word of God should be used to accomplish this. Make sure that the Word of God is foremost, and that everything centers around the Word of God. In closing, I want to mention again that there were two altars. The burnt altar is where God deals with a sinner. It speaks of the earth and the sin of man. The altar of incense speaks of heaven and holiness. The burnt altar speaks of what Christ did for us on earth. The incense altar speaks of what Christ is doing for us in heaven today. It also speaks of our prayers and our part in worship. It speaks of Christ who prays for us. He is the one who truly praises God and prays for us. He is the one who genuinely worships God for us. He is our intercessor. How are we to learn to worship? Well, not at the bloody altar where you go as a sinner and take Christ as your Savior. You enter the holy place and come to the golden altar. There is no sacrifice there because the sin question was settled outside. When you worship God, the sin question has to be settled. The very basis rests upon the fact that this altar once a year was consecrated with blood. As believers, we are accepted in the Beloved before God. God hears our prayers because of what Christ has done.